Okay, kiddos, it's Mr. V again. Welcome to Subtracting Decimals now. So just like we did in the other video, the key to decimals, especially when it comes to addition and subtraction, is aligning the decimal points. So we'll do 3.71 minus 2.3. Okay, just like in the addition, if there's nothing here, but there's a digit on top of it, you can just add a zero. So now we have a fair decimal equation. So one minus zero is one. Seven minus three is four. And then three minus two is one. You see, subtracting decimals and subtracting whole numbers are the same thing. The only difference is you have decimal points now. Okay, but Mr. V, what if, what if we have decimals that look like this? What if it's like 4.792 minus uh, 0 0.31? Okay, well, that's all right. We'll just do it like we normally do it. We rewrite it. Instead of going horizontal, we write it vertically. So 4.792 minus, remember, the decimal point will tell you where it goes. So the decimal point goes here, the zero goes here, and then 31. And again, if you have an empty space here, you can add a zero. Two minus zero, 2, 9 minus 1, 8, 7 minus 3, 4, and then 4 minus 0 is 4. See? It's not that hard, kiddos, I promise you. You keep practicing, you keep doing your work, you keep asking questions, this will get easier for you over time, okay? Now, the next thing. I'm going to give, let's say, maybe two more questions. So let's make them a little higher. How about 11.0? minus 2.82. You will get questions like these in the future, but let me go over it with you before that. So 11.0 minus 2.82. Well, like we always do, there's a digit down here, so let's add a zero up top. You cannot do low numbers minus high numbers. You can't do that. It's gonna give you a very strange question. Zero minus two is not two. You can't do that. No, no, no. You have to regroup. So this zero has to borrow from this zero, but there's nothing here. So now this zero has to borrow from this one. So we regroup from the one. This one now becomes a zero. This zero here becomes a 10. But now we still need to regroup for this zero. So we'll take from this 10 and this zero becomes a 10. And now this zero becomes a nine. Now we can subtract 10 minus 2, 8, 9 minus 8, 1. We can't do 0 minus 2. Remember, it's too small to subtract. So we have to borrow from this one again. So now this 1 becomes a 0 here, and this 0 becomes a 10. So 10 minus 2 is 8. In subtraction, as long the decimal points are in the same spot, they don't move, OK? Just like with addition. Here's the last question for now. What if we just have a whole number? 12 minus 4.26. There's no decimal point. Don't panic. If you don't see a decimal point, it's all right. If it is just a whole number, that means the decimal point is right here at the end of it. And then you just add the two zeros. You see how it's similar to this one? The only difference is I added the decimal point myself. Now, just like the rule before, you can't subtract numbers on top that are smaller than the numbers on the bottom. So you have to borrow. We'll start with this zero. This zero will borrow from the two. So this two becomes a one and this zero becomes a 10. Then this zero right here will become a 10 because it borrowed from this 10 and this 10 becomes a one, okay? Sorry, this 10 becomes a nine, sorry, okay? So now we can subtract. 10 minus six is four. Nine minus two is seven. We can't do one minus four, can't do that. So we have to borrow again. This one here becomes a zero and this one becomes an 11. You guys got it? Good. So now we do 11 minus four. 11, 10, 9, 8. So that'll give us 7. You see? It's not that difficult, kiddos. And I know you can do it. 
The next video will be multiplying fractions. I'll see you there.